Hey everyone, I just want to do a little quick update here. As you may or may not have already heard, uh, if you enjoy Sabotage as much as I do, you've probably heard the news that John Oliva has announced that they're actually working on a new Sabotage album. Now, while that makes me very excited, it's how some of the stuff that John said that has me concerned. Um, I took some of the stuff that I found online in regards to what John re recently said about this. And he said, people don't realize what I've gone through on a personal level. They don't know. It's hard, it's really hard, and I've just had to deal with a lot of shit. Why aren't you making new music? Well, fuck you. Why don't you try? Everyone I know is dead. I want to do a new Sabotage album, one final tour, and then I'm packing it in. I'm done with this whole shit. Everyone I know is dead. My wife died. My son died. My father died. I'm on probation. I can't drive. And they're trying to fuck me because I'm a supposed rock star. They keep trying to like catch me and I'm like, dude, I'm not doing anything. I can't even go anywhere. Just leave me alone. Regarding his son's passing, John had said he died in January of this year. He was actually my stepson, but I was more of a father to him than anybody. And I was very close with him. And he died. He OD'd on January, I believe it was 23rd, Olivia said. Olivia also opened about his wife's death, saying, Me and my son Nicholas, we knew it. We were just watching my wife, and I remember telling Nick, and I said, Dude, I'm terrified. Because I'm going to come home one day from the studio, and she's going to be dead, lying on the floor. And that is exactly what happened. My stepson dies, and then my wife dies, and then my father dies. It's like I'm looking up at heaven going, Is that all you got, motherfuckers? It's like, come on, man, enough is enough. Now, that said, that's a lot of shit to go through for anyone, um, especially if you're a creative. I mean, first, let me say, it's difficult to go through for anyone. Um, but especially for someone who is creative, often they are extremely emotional in how they take things. I, speaking on my own behalf, as I have long been an aspiring writer and music has often been a way for me to channel that writing if i need to write a specific thing i often turn on music that basically turns on that creative creativity in my brain and i know for myself i can easily be emotional when things that are very drastic like someone passing or several people passing um even though that's what we just talked about right now john also lost his brother a long time ago to a drunk driver who hit Chris's car head-on, killing Chris instantly and um, critically wounding Chris's wife, who would eventually die um, a few few years later. I don't know what she passed away from, um, but then Paul O'Neill uh, recently passed away. Um, another guitarist that uh, that John had for his band also recently passed away. So John has been surrounded by a lot of unfortunate circumstance and death. That said, here's what he had to say about the new Sabotage album. I've made mistakes before. I'm not going to make these mistakes now. I'm not rushing it. I figure, well, I want to get it out by next April so that I can come over with everybody. We all want to do it, and we want to do the festivals next summer. And I'm like, I'm not going to rush this. No fucking way. Because this will probably be the last album we ever do as Sabotage. And I'm going to make sure it's a 10 out of 10. I've had enough material now for about three albums. And what I'm going to try to do is condense it down. I'm going to try to condense it down to one album with three bonus tracks. I'm going to record everything. I'm going to get the guys down here. So we're going to record this shit and we're going to get it all done. And in case I want to do another album, I already have it ready to go. That's the game plan. Some of this shit is really strong. I'm even looking at myself going, holy shit, this is really strong. And the fact that you're going to give me, excuse me, and the fact that you're going to have me and the other Sabotage singer known as Zach Stevens sharing vocals and doing songs together as a duet thing is even more. It blows me away. I purposely wrote five or six songs specifically for Zach to sing. And then I wrote and worked on a lot of songs with Al, uh, with Al who will be playing guitar on the album, that are definitely the Oliva songs, as he puts it in quotes. And then we have a couple of big epic songs. This is going to be the best album I've ever made, Oliva promised. Until, I'm sorry, unless I kill myself. Now, I'm sure he does not 
hopefully mean that. This is what I was talking about in terms of like, there's good news, he's talking about a sabotage album, but then he makes remarks of like, unless I kill myself. Considering all he's gone through, that is actually a genuine concern of mine. So uh, it does make me worry. Anyway, I'll go on. He continues to say, all I know is that the seven fans are gonna be fucking blown away when they hear this. They're gonna be blown away. I wasn't gonna do a sabotage thing, just a half-ass album. If I'm gonna do this album, it's gonna be the best album I've ever done. Cause when I go out, I wanna go out on top. John went on to say that there, there is a new sabotage song called For the Man Who Would Be King. Uh, it is one of the sometimes refers to as like the new morphine child. It's a nod to the track uh, from the 2001 Sabotage album from Poets and Madmen. And that's one where he and Zach are going to sing together. And then it's going to be a big middle section that has that Queen operatic style vocals. And John is quoted as saying, I'm like, wow, this is going to be fucking epic. John went on to say, I'm going to have the former Sabotage drummer, Steve, Dr. Kildrums, who come in and play a couple of the songs, but Jeff Plate, who had been drumming for Sabotage for a while now, will be the primary drummer. Johnny Lee Middleton will be on pace, naturally. Al will be on guitar. Chris Caffrey will be on guitar. And Zach and John will share a couple of the vocal tracks. And he mentioned that he's going to have Jane, and I'm going to probably slaughter Jane's last name, but I believe it's pronounced Mangini. M-A-N-G-I-N-I from Transiberia Orchestra, who's a keyboardist, to come out and play. And maybe the Ukraine guy, uh, another name I'm probably going to slaughter, which is, I believe, Vitalij, V-I-T-A-L-I-J. And then the last name is Kuprij, K-U-P-R-I-J. Uh, because John explains, because I have a couple of these things that are beyond my capabilities of playing, I figured instead of me spending time you know, like a couple of months trying to figure out how to play this. I have this guy on TSO who by far is an incredible player. And he said, Olivia, why are you being so stupid? Why are you going to sit here and try to do this shit? You can't do it. With four arms, you couldn't do it. So he continued to say, I'm going to get everyone involved from the beginning. I want it to be a full band album, all of us working together, and it's going to be fucking great. Now, this is where it gets a little worrisome again. He says there is a title on the album that so far the working title is going to be called Curtain Call. But I don't know if that's going to be it because it's the very last song on the album and it's called Curtain Call and it's just me on piano and it's a very deep song. It's basically me singing to the fans, telling them goodbye and thank you. Every time I hear it, I cry, he says. Every time I've played it for others, they cry. It's just a very deep song. He goes on to say, but it's my way of saying goodbye to everybody. Thank you, I love you, and this is my final goodbye. Thank you, have a good life, and do whatever. So he says, I think I'm going to call it Curtain Call, but that's not in stone yet, he says. He goes on to say, we're going to work on it, record it starting in June, and we're going to work on it until we have to go to Omaha for TSO rehearsals. And then after the TSO tour in January, we're going to come back and finish it up in January and February. And I want to put it out on Chris's, Chris, that's his brother, Chris Liva's uh, birthday in April of next year. So what we're looking at is potentially a Sabotage album in April of 2024. John also talked about Sabotage's touring plan saying, we have a lot of offers to come over and do festivals. And I'm like, all right, man, look. I'm not 25 anymore. If we're going to do this, I want to do the Wacken Open Air in Germany. I want to do them all, and that's it. And I'm done with it. And it's my way of saying goodbye to everybody, giving the fans a goodbye from me and the guys to them. Hey, we love you. He goes on to say, I've loved our fans forever. They've provided me with a living, and I'm not going to let them down. I'm going to come out. I'm going to go out to the next summer doing the festivals, and we're going to kick ass. So, ladies and gentlemen, we do have what appears to be a Sabotage album coming out in April of 2024. And uh, hopefully uh, everything turns out great for John. All right, that's all I wanted to say. Um, if you're noticing the weird uh, audio in the background, uh, that's because I recently got a second strike for the live Sabotage album I uploaded. Something apparently got flagged for Beyond the Doors of the Dark. 
So instead of risking playing a sabotage song in the background and getting my third strike, which would terminate the channel, I decided to use some license-free music that I have to play the background, and I figured something ominous would be a good setting for sabotage. Anyway, I hope you like this, and uh, can't wait for April 2024. Alright, bye.